Time for our business update now. Yuka Roye joins me now. We're starting with some corporate news, Roika. Uh, media giant Altus, it looks like it's in serious trouble. Uh, yes, Sharon, the company uh, says it will hold off on further acquisitions and focus instead on cutting debt. This after its share prices tumbled in recent weeks and months, wiping off half the company's value. Altis has emerged as a major telecoms player in Europe and the United States in recent years and is known for its aggressive buyout strategy. But disappointing earnings have renewed concerns about its towering debt, Erin Nogaki explains. A downward spiral for French telecoms giant Altis. It has lost half of its value in just six months. A starkly different image from four years ago, when the company, founded by French billionaire Patrick Jahi, went public. Over the past 15 days, share prices have fallen more than 40 percent. A rude awakening for a company that quickly grew into a telecoms empire, including Numeri Cable, SFR, Virgin Mobile, and other French media companies like the newspapers Libération and Express, as well as BFM TV. But recently, the company has plunged deeper into the red. Activity has slowed for this extremely indebted company. The risk is that the company has trouble paying off its debt. Debt that has grown to more than 50 billion euros. And yet Patrick Jahi has long defended his debt-fueled business model. I'm criticized for my level of debt, but I must say that I sleep much better having 50 billion euros in debt now than I did when I was 50,000 French francs in debt when I first started this business. Jahi has relied on debt-fueled acquisitions. So much so that the company's debt now amounts to five times its annual core operating profit. But the company's founder now says it will shift its focus from acquiring new businesses to reducing its debt. Reassuring words that were enough to lift Altice's share prices over the past couple of days. Well, turning now to Europe, the banking sector got a warning from regulators over its post-Brexit plans. The European Central Bank uh, says that banks need to have substance locally. In other words, they can't, there can't be empty shells or letterbox banks. The ECB's regulatory body says that banks not only need enough funding and cash, but they also need enough staff to, to avoid being shell companies operated by the headquarters in third countries. It warns that some of the plans it has reviewed uh, seem to, to lean towards that and calls for improvements. OK, let's take, like, take a quick look at the financial markets. Yeah. Starting in Europe, uh, trading got underway just a uh, short while ago. All in the green, despite Wednesday's losses on Wall Street, shares of Swedish home appliance maker Electrolux plunged to nearly 3.5%, despite saying it sees growth in the market. Let's take a look at some more of the day's business headlines. An Angola's president has sacked his predecessor's daughter as head of the state oil company, San San Senegal. Uh, Isabel Dos Santos is listed as Africa's richest woman by Forbes magazine with an estimated personal wealth of 2.8 billion euros. The surprise move by President John Lorenko is seen as part of his drive to assert authority and clear out the legacy of the controversial former president. An, Af an American law firm says it's investigating claims made, by, made in court that Mexico's Grupo Televisa paid bribes to secure TV rights for football matches. Televisa has denied any wrongdoing in the New York corruption trial of three former executives of FIFA. The US law firm has appealed to let Televisa's investors for help in the investigation. And here in France, unemployment rose slightly in the third quarter of this year. The jobless rate was at 9.4% in metropolitan France and 9.7% if overseas territories are included. President Macron has placed labour reforms at the core of his policy to lower unemployment by making hiring and firing easier. And finally, a portrait by Leonardo da Vinci has been breaking records, but there was another valuable gem which failed to go under the hammer. And this one's not a work of art, but a work of nature. The Raj Pink, the largest pink diamond in the world, couldn't sell at a Sotheby's sell of precious jewels in Geneva. The 37.3 carat stone was slated to fetch up to $30 million, but the highest bid stopped at $14 million, below the minimum price. Sotheby's had, hoped, had high hopes after after rival Christie's sold a huge 163 carat diamond for nearly $34 million. Lots of money being yeah. talked about. Amazing. Thank you, Yuka. That's Yuka Royer from the Business Desk.